Hello and welcome to the week 2 recap for Rail Division 5B and C. I'm Kiss Blue! And I'm Gengar, your second host. Today we have somebody missing, though. Uh, yep. And that would be Nosedive, Nosedice, who scheduled for this time and then didn't. Well, no. Let's let's not throw ne unnecessarily shade on it. Just it work scheduling can... problems happen. Yeah, if work mm. calls upon you, then you have to go work. I mean, this is still secondary mm -hmm. compared to real life work situation. So, too bad that he's not here. But you know, we'll have a little bit less creepy factor then. Yeah. Okay, let's go. And he'll be here next week, probably. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so... I'm going to be sitting out next week because mm -hmm. of work. FYI. So, we will be starting with 5B, and speaking of absentees, we now have this nice banner on the top saying one more team has left the convention. That is because the tragedy dot, uh, plus time, I'm looking at the wrong week there, uh, tragedy plus time, knockoff, is gone. He had to drop out. I think. So basically, to just back it all together, this division started with 12 people because there wasn't enough to fill mm -hmm. up. And then Knockoff had, because of personal reasons, leave the division. So right now we have 11 teams and 3 bye weeks cycling through to the end. Mm -hmm. This is just a small warning for everybody who knows that you will be receiving admin wins mm -hmm. instead of facing Knockoff's team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now Tragedy.time is effectively the same as an AI team, only you can't accidentally play against them. So I guess it's sort of better that way. Um, anyway, yeah. uh, let's jump right in. The first match is, that is an AI game, uh, the Lich's Skull Crushers versus the Internal Watchers. You Worship Chaos versus the Cowboy Dwarfs is a game that was actually played, though. So let's look at that. Uh, just for one second, please. Oh. Lich's Skull Crushers is a Chaos Dwarf theme, right? Uh, yeah, they yes. are. Now, go to that match, Lich's Skull Crushers and Eternal Watches, click on it, and look at the MVP. Ha! Huh. That is quite <laughs> odd. <laughs> That's a skink Chaos Dwarf blocker. It shows, on mine, it shows as a uh, Norse, but uh, <laughs> if you click on it, it's just the portrait that's wrong. The name and the player name and everything else is correct. <laughs> okay, that's... It should be two portraits as well, so that it. is very odd. Yep. Well, that was okay. worth seeing. <laughs> and this has been Buck Report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See you next time. Anyway, anyway, let's go to the next match. You worship Chaos uh, versus the Cowboy Dwarfs. The Dwarfs. I have seen. I have seen mm -hmm. the. Uh, well, not really the game itself, but I've seen the like results and the um, post um, match report of this game. A lot of Norse people actually got injured, and mm -hmm. I think even one of them, somebody important, died. Uh, what but, the lineman with uh, the berserker oh. has a level up, mm -hmm. and the right and the plus agility runner got MVP. Yes, so that's you know bad things and good things happening at the same time for Norse. But so basically, this is like the ideal dwarf game where they murdered their way through. They killed the guard lineman that the Norse had, which is a really sucky thing to lose. And then they also lost another lineman as well, which was undeveloped. Kyle Merlin also sitting on Clint Eastwood with 13 out of 16 SVP, almost ready to pump on people. And this is amazing for Dwarf team. This is a team which has four guards already. Yeah, uh, speaking as a Dwarf coach myself, the more guard, the better. And, uh, the fact that he's sitting on one runner still is amazing that he actually was able to score twice, but it's working now with all the cards. And so all the mm -hmm. power to it. And just for reference, the Dwarfs got 19 SVP that game. Yeah, that's supposed to happen with all the hitting. <laughs> yeah. I think how many blocks were there in that game? Uh, there were... Let's see... 55. I mean 56 for the Dwarfs, which is standard. And only 34 for the Norse. That's really little for a Norse team. Yeah, it is. They probably, if I had, I didn't watch this game, but if I had to guess looking at this, the Norse probably started taking uh, casualties early on, and then it just spiraled from there. 
And they also have an expulsion, so that Benji actually started to slink real fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, next game. Next game is the Rottingham Rotters, Rockers, rather, versus the Heroes of the Sword Coast. King of Cosmos really needed a break with this match, and I actually am curious if he got it now. This little break that he needed. Uh, As you know, if you remember last week when you saw his mm -hmm. team, he got seriously crippled by, I think, the Kemi he was facing back then. I mean, truth be told, I don't know that he came out of this smelling like roses either. Not only are Nurgle literally stinky, I um, uh, King of the Cosmos faced the Mole Steam, mm -hmm. which hurt him real bad, which funny mm -hmm. enough now got hurt by dwarves, and now King of the Cosmos had a I'm not going to say easy game like he did, like you said, but mm -hmm. it's a little bit less deadly than last game. He did lose two thralls, but no vampires took permanent injuries, just a miss next game. So, uh, which isn't so bad. Yeah, which isn't so bad. Uh, the only SPV he got all game was on his MVP, though, which at least was a vampire. Rottingham Rockers on the other side have a very nice development going on right now in their team. Mm hmm. Also, the fact that he might have a second piece of Nurgle coming in soon. Okay. Oh, the yeah. Slot. They do have that, don't they? Oof. They have a strength 5 Nurgle Warrior mm -hmm. ready to rot up the place. That I mean, will. It's not, as, it's not as bad as Witch's strength 6 Nurgle Warrior, but you know, it's getting there. Yeah. And you need to be strength 5 before you're strength 6. Indeed. Unless you're a Death Roller, I suppose. Nah, um, I mean, you go straight nine then. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next game is the Hufflepuff Heroes versus the. In Wait, no, this is another AI game, isn't it? It is Admin Win. Kepri get the. Yep. Okay. They get the free SPP and they now have a level skeleton, so, you know, if that's not a doubles or edgy up. Dirty that's player. Probably going to be dirty player. Okay, so moving on. The High Fivers versus really famous medics. The medics won one to zero, and that was Chaos versus uh, Necromantic. Let me just see the tell of the tale. Uh, high Fivers, where are they? Well, uh, high Fivers versus the Chaos team here. Wasn't this there yet? was this a the, uh... lot? There were a lot of battles this game. Three expulsions on one side and one on the other. Yeah, this is the team with the Catch Chaos Warrior, which got bounded. So mm -hmm. you know. Might be an idea to remove them. Also, it's funny how the team has two Chaos Warriors to level up, which both got Mighty Blow, two Beasts with a level up, which both got Claw. Oh. Then that's Catch Chaos Warrior, and then a Strength Four Beast. Oh yeah, that is the highlight of this game for really famous medics for sure. They got a Beastman who got plus Strength. Doctor Evil now will eat his own end hmm. with his own ass. Surprisingly, though. The Don't Necro smell. made way more blocks than the Chaos did. Um, probably because of all the movement, and they might have been able to lure the Chaos into blocking. Like with uh, good positioning and having the that's the thing that they have more ball position. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and between the score and the injuries, I think it, I think it's fair to say that Nuffle was on the Chaos team's side this game. Yeah. Usually the guy who holds the ball the longest is the guy who will mm -hmm. be giving the most punches because the other one has to find strategy to Not the least. case here, though. What I do see, though, is that mm -hmm. I like where this um, necromantic team is going, where it's edgy block wolf, another normal block or wolf. Mm -hmm. We got them that white already, very useful. Flesh Combs getting blocked, we got a dirty player, so yeah, it's going to go very well and very smooth. Mm -hmm. next, next Moving game. on, the next game is your Lizard Airy versus. Oh, wait, no, wait. that is also a admin game. What did the skinks. What yes. did they get though? Uh, skink and a Saurus. Looks like the Saurus got a level as well. Eh, that's not so bad. Dodge Saurus, okay. <laughs> And two block Saurus. Well, well, if you're well, just developing. Well, if you're patient, dodge on a Saurus isn't that bad. It's not maybe my favorite first pick, but I guess we'll you see how it goes. Break. You can get block and get break tackle and go out and swim. Like it, it's not a bad pick. Mm -hmm. I just 
could enjoy and see it because it just slows down your development. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I I have mm. a personal question against it. It's not like I actually hate mm. this game. It's just like personally I don't like it. So I think the real highlight here is organized crime versus the Pantheon passers, the latter of whom won that? four to zero. What is up with all these ogres losing so badly versus all the teams? Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> don't don't say last anything like that. Is... Wait until we get last to week? 5C. <laughs> yeah, okay, but last week in 5C we had 5-0 um, for, I think, an elf team, and now it's 4-0 for an elf team. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the are showing the ogres how it's done. some really interesting things happened in this game. Uh, aside from the elves winning 4-0, oh, there are some amazing level ups. The elves got plus agility. The ogres got plus strength. Uh, surprisingly high ball occupation for the ogres, especially considering how many times they got scored on. Clearly, clearly there was no stalling at all going on in this game. At least not yeah, for the elves. He, um, I actually like what Spikasaurus has done with the team. Mm -hmm. He's getting break tackle on all ogres, and he has removed any um how they called knoblar mm -hmm. from his team he He's literally like... has no knoblars which makes sense actually in a division where he has three concede wins he may as well just get rid of them not even bother worry about trying to replace them and soak up the extra spp on his uh ogres when he has a five ogres, yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's a cheeky tactic, but I like it. And I also mm -hmm. like how he's just doing break tackling and everybody just to create mm -hmm. some more diverse, you know, speed on the team. I have, anyway, I have heard arguments passes. against that, but we two, will not talk about that right two now. Two edgy five catchers. Two edgy five catchers. You people need to slow down here and realize what this actually means. 8347 is a war dancer stat line. These guys, they start with catch and nerve steel, but if they get dodge and block and leap, which is three levels, then they basically are a war dancer which has catch and nerves of steel, which is not really bad. Now, with these edgy ups, these can become really good ball sackers mm -hmm. and scorers at the same time. These two guys are going to really make this team shine. Yeah, I think. I think this is a team. If it doesn't implode, it could be around for a while. Yeah, and the thrower has strong arm, which is also amazing because he can get accurate next, and then maybe safe pass, and also be an awesome thrower, which always will catch the ball because there are just edgy five catchers running around the field. The blitzes are just blotch, tackle them. If they can get fenced, then they're just safe as well. Mm -hmm. Might as well get a guard as there, or maybe a mighty blow. This game is really looking good. Mm -hmm. There's only one thing I miss in this team, and he might get it on the sketchers, or he might get it on his linemen, but I want to see three wrestlers. Uh, yeah, I could see that, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on to our, uh, spe spe our specific teams to review. Uh, would you like to start? Yes. I took the Cowboy Dwarfs this week, because next to Camry coaching, I actually have coached a lot of dwarves in my time. I think I got like over 200 dwarf games. I actually got more dwarf games than the other team. But yeah, I like what they did versus the Norse. And mm -hmm. I like their general tactic. Basically, it's better to go to runners in general. Mm -hmm. But if I make a dwarf team, I oddly enough also pick either one runner or two runners and no blitzes at the start. Hmm. I mean, I prefer having all the positionals except for the, uh, w with with the obvious exception on dwarves. But uh, in, the in, thing is, in terms of development, I think he's doing everything right. If you don't get doubles, this is exactly yeah. what you want a early development dwarf team to look like. The thing is, blitzes and runners can get their development pretty easily, and in dwarf teams, if you have them running in the field at the beginning, they just run away with all the SPP. If you have some more long bits in the first original 11 where you play with, or if you just take a few losses and tank a few gains, then those will have their guard up in mass quicker. And then if you buy those blitzes and runners, they're going to get, you know, up with the demon leveled anyway. And those long bits, they just need the MVPs to get going. Mm. 
So well, it, it basically means you get more gout out of it. Mm -hmm. I suppose there's an argument for it either way. It, in any case, uh, these dwarves went one runner, and it has, uh, it has, well, it's mostly worked out for them so far, I'd say. Uh, it's one one. Well, one, yeah, one. one one. And the, he can basically buy another runner at any point when he wishes to. Mm -hmm. But I think what the first thing he really wishes to do right now is get an uh, MVP on Morgan Freeman, mm -hmm. get a hit on Gene and Jack, and then uh, get a hit mm -hmm. on Sam. Because then he will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. A Pomp Slayer, probably a Mighty Blow Slayer, and with some luck, a Blotch Runner. And if mm -hmm. he then gets the second runner and the eleventh, uh, I mean the twelfth player in his team, so he also has a bench, then this team is going to be really strong out of the bat. Mm -hmm. Plus, if, he, if he's of one thousand four hundred k. Plus, if he's anything like me, he might want to rush an early stadium upgrade. Uh, dwarves are are a team that just gets so much out of several different upgrades, actually. So I, and it's easy for them to save up money early on. So I really like to see them get it early when they can. If he really like plays on PV, then I might as well suggest Knuckles Altar as a mm -hmm. stadium upgrade because then you can get Barik Farblast and the Dwarven Bomber. I don't know how he's called. I think he's Flint. Yeah, for both 10k. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like that, you can get a bribe so you can actually foul those dwarves. And if you don't like that either, you can get a weather dome so you can pick up the ball and not worry about the rain. No, 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 no. If you get a bribe, then you can get a death roller. I mean, in fairness, if you have a death roller, you're sh you're probably fouling anyway. Well, you might as well foul and not do some crazy blitzes with it, because I have proven that a death roller can be removed from turn one. Mm-hmm. That you have. Uh, the thing is, though, I've done it three times already in the Ari, uh, well, not in the Ari, but in Rebel in general. Three times, really? In the full really? I've had, yes. I am so I've glad. I am so glad. I. <laughs> I had three matches versus Dwarves, all three of them they had a Death Roller, and in all three of them it got removed turn one. Well, I don't have a Death Roller, but I'm very glad that I'm not in the same division as you. I don't know, I just seem to have a Kryptonite for Death Rollers. Mm -hmm. Well, But yes, this was the Cowboy Dwarves, next team, mm -hmm. your team. Uh, my team for this week is going to be, if I can find it on the list, um, no, actually, I can't because I'm blind. Uh, where the heck is, there. The Necromantic team, the High Fivers, coached by Uber the Nuber. With his very green outfits. Mm -hmm. We high five with claws. That you do. Uh, and ag ag agility full claws as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, so you were saying this earlier, but this is like looking like a decent early development team. Uh, he has some interesting choices on it, though, I think. Uh, he, in particular, for his white, the first thing he took was guard, which I can definitely mm -hmm. understand with necromantic. It definitely makes your early game stronger, but possibly at the risk of slowing down getting to the, the middling development where necromantic starts getting really good. Yeah, if you look at these level ups, then this coach probably has one word in mind while leveling these guys up, and that's probably the word reliability. Mm -hmm. Trying to get as much use out of their guys, and maybe getting slow development of not going all mighty blow first, but just going for the, the you know the most strategic mm -hmm. game rather than the long game. Yeah, and he already has thirteen players, so he, you know he's fouling. And with only one yeah. ghoul, that's probably for... He, that ghoul has not scored at all. Uh, how many games has it played? It has played... It's been in two matches, so... It is probably there for emergencies when he can't score with his werewolves. Which, it looks... Well, seeing, it looks pretty clear to me that's seeing, what he wants to do. Seeing as he, how he's already done a pass for them, he's probably hoping for an MVP to land on it. And I think mm -hmm. he's even going to get wrestle on the wheel, a goal and make it like a ball sack rather than a scorer. I could definitely see that, yeah. I I feel like the only thing I don't like about this, and this is just my opinion, I've but I don't really like the agility on the werewolves. I've seen plus agility werewolves that have been amazing. Uh, there's one in Rel 1 right now. Uh, 
Do you know that there's a werewolf somewhere in, uh, was it 5F or 5A? I don't know. But uh, played by Jimmy Burrito, who is now 8448. Oh, yeah, that is just, it's a vampire with claws. <laughs> and frenzy. And two and movement. And movement allowed. It's yeah. just. <laughs> It's and no blood lo it is just it keeps getting better and it's just insane but normal outside of incredible cases like that i don't the agility is not my favorite thing on werewolves because it's you're specializing a player who's best at killing things towards handling the yeah. ball more and it's still a really good ball handler with eight movement I, and four agility and agility access but i actually am also very um Happy to see that mm -hmm. the curse of Rumblebee is done. Oh, you're right. This is the this is the first this is the first necromantic team I've looked at in a long time that has both of its flesh golems. So uh, <laughs> watch out for that because I'm expecting as soon as Frankenstein here, on theme name there by the way, uh, as soon as he levels up, he, he is going to have a huge target on his back. He's he, there's a good chance he's going to die because all. Flesh golems die in Ariel. All flesh golems die in Ariel. Don't don't look at, at regeneration. It's not gonna work. Well, flesh golems, yeah, they do have regeneration, but indeed, indeed it does never work. There's only one flesh golem who lives, and he has won the Super Bowl, and his name is Frank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it... Frank is the tank. And that's sort of how it goes with fleshies in Ralph. Okay. So, uh, first we will have to do a small apology to our viewers, because Nova Zive is not here today, people. We will only have to, well, we will only look at two team each of Division 5B and 5C to make it fair. Mm -hmm. So with this, uh, looks at the teams of this week is over, and we shall see the schedule of next week. Yep. Uh, just a quick reminder, Eternal Watchers versus You Worship Chaos is a, uh, is a bye week as is you, you worship you so that worship, you worship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but they get a, a rest week now which as, is really needed because they got a few mngs as is incandescent dragons versus your lizard airy which i think is the second bye week in a row for the lizards sorry about yeah, that sakari is not going to be happy mm -hmm. with that because the lizards are in a good shape and they're just sitting on the bench i had the exact same thing happen to me in uh last season as well where one where a coach unexpectedly dropped out and had two admin ro uh, games in a row because of it, and it sucks. But you know, it happens. Y they're almost all out of the way now. It's nothing much. And uh, tragedy plus time versus pantheon passers will also be an admin game. Yep, this is also not really needed, but you know, I'll take the win, of course. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the games that we do have this week in store for the people is the Rottingham Rockers, Nurgle versus Lich's Skull Crushers, Chaos Dwarf, the Battle of the Claws. Chaos Dwarf versus Nurgle. Chaos Dwarfs have the early advantage here, and he also has two gods in the Steam Lich. Mm -hmm. So this is going to swing this into a positive game for the Nurg uh, for the Chaos Dwarf, but. Nurgle do have Nurgle. the strength advantage. They really outpower the mm -hmm. dwarves, so the dwarves are going to have to play on speed, which is annoying, to say the least. But doable. Chaos dwarves are a lot faster than regular dwarves, and therefore Nurgle. And there is also one thing a Chaos Dwarf can do, uh, without Nurgle really being able to do much about it, but it's a little bit dangerous, and that's just negatizing. If you can't knock the Chaos Warrior down with a dwarf, but, you know, your base up, are you going to get punched? Mine is only get ice. There's only a 75% chance it actually becomes something bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, a 25% chance it becomes something bad, and there's a 75% chance you'll get either a push, a double down, a knock, or a fumble. All, so, you know, all of which are fine on a Chaos without any block or... Uh, Nurgle, yep. rather, without any block or dodge. This is why it's really, really critical that Rottingham Rockers already has two Nurgle Warriors for block. That's mm -hmm. going to help them a lot to face that, you know, blocking dwarfs shenanigans. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, next game. Yeah, so the game I'm going to take a quick look at is, uh, I think I talked up the stunty game last week, so 
I'm going to have to skip on that this time, and instead I'll talk about the Heroes of Sword Coast vs. High Fivers, Vampires vs. Necro. Uh, I think that'll be, I think that could be a fun game. I, I think it definitely has the advantage going towards the Necromantic. Uh, but, vampires are still vampires. Like, if they have perfect, if they have, if they roll well, there's all, hardly anything you can actually do to, against vampires. The trick, that's really the trick though, if they roll well. This is the thing though, they really need the big fight now to rebuild the team with mm -hmm. vampires because they had such a hard beating from Gaskell, his Norse. And if yeah. I look at the schedule, they're not getting it. They're not getting it at all. They are going to face elves first, which is okay mm -hmm. for the injuries, but then they're facing the dwarves. <laughs> and after that onslaught, they finally get a break. Yeah, so King of I, Cosmos is in for a very bumpy ride. It might be time to just run on Loner Thralls for a while for him. Just see what he can get in the way of inducements, you know? And try yeah. to develop his vampires however he can. I think it really is needed because it's going to be a painful uh, trip otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, so, on that note, we will move on to Div 5C. C for Charlie. C for Goblin, because that's the way that works. Right? Right. Uh... <laughs> Colvin. Okay, so let's first um, look at the schedule of this week and see what has happened. Okay. Frozen Death Note versus Cantacitus Cretaceans. I think it's it like this. I'm going to try it again. Can take it as Cretaceans. Uh, can... I hope I'm right with that. I believe that it is Cancerous Cretaceans. Cretaceans? Canta Caris. You know what? I don't think either of us are quite right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tell the tale of this team is that they have an agility uh, force kink. Uh, yep, those are those are pretty good. Let the dodging turns out. I'm pretty sure I have that skink on my fantasy team, actually. Glad to see it's doing well. <laughs> and uh, so Frozen Dead Nought took a loss versus this team mm -hmm. with that skink. Uh, not much in terms of armor breaks. Yep. Just uh... two touchdowns. So I think, yeah, looking at the ball position, this just was a better mm -hmm. general game of shelf. And, you know, holding the ball. Yep, looks it's like... Doing what they are good in. Looks like Lizard did a good job of keeping Frozen Dead North away from the ball and just outstrengthening them. Yep. But they do have a blotch cool now, which is nice. A block zombie. I don't know why you would get a block zombie, but I know that people like them. And a block flesh golem, not bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next match. Corn's Glory. One. Pro in a party. Three. This is another win, I think, for Souls of Dragonfire, basically putting on a very dominant statement with his Pro Elves, having five mm -hmm. wins and only one loss. This is counting the Greenhorn Cup, of course, but still has not lost yet. Also worth mentioning, he now has a... After this game, he now has two Blitzers with Guard. That's really great. Two Blotch Sidestep Blitzers with Guard. They yeah. can pretty much go any day where they please, and he has four catchers, mm -hmm. so this team has maximum speed. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a uh, taking Mighty Blow on his team, but with this division, I can hardly blame him for choosing Guard instead. In, yeah, and in he... the matches where Mighty Bl where he can make best use of Mighty Blow, he probably doesn't need it to uh, to get the victory. His team is also getting bloody. He's already sitting at 1,500 TV in only six games. That's mm -hmm. getting bloody real quick. Possibly the highest TV out of all, all of the teams we're looking at? For today, yes. Cole's Glory was 10, 10 coin. And he now owns two Mighty Blow Claw Beastmen. So this guy is just going to go straight to the murder pad. I love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can also say I'm honestly glad I'm not in that division, if only, if only for team preservation. I like how this team is about to level up everything. 2 out of 6, 4 out of 6, 3 out of 6, 4 out of 6. 
I have high hopes mm -hmm. for Ten Points team. I'm very curious what it's going to make out of this team. Hmm. An interesting tidbit: Pro in a party hit a hundred running yards in this game and twenty passing yards. So you know, well, anyone who, anyone in the lounge. fantasy team or anyone in the fantasy league who has some of his players on their uh, on their roster is probably doing pretty well. <laughs> very, very surely. <laughs> But then again, this is to be suspected from Souls of Dragonfire. Mm -hmm. Next match. Go ahead. Uh, Grungy Desserts versus Say Hello to My Little Friends. 2-0 think... for yeah. the, uh, the uh, Nurgle. Yes. Oof, but Staticus does seem to have lost a lot of players. Mm -hmm. Is he also doing the no lineman approach? Because I don't see any lineman in this team anymore. None? Maybe maybe he just ran out because uh, Negative Pro managed to kill two Rotters in this game. So he may have lost, but he definitely left a mark on the Nurgle. It, admittedly, okay. a replaceable one. So Staticus literally has no Rotters anymore. That's interesting. I mean, I don't dislike it. It still has all his positionals except for one testicle. It's just like, huh, mm. okay. <laughs> Special. This team is going to mm -hmm. either do really, really well or really, really bad. They do have a win and a loss now, so I think, mm -hmm. you know, things well, right now are going very even. Well, as I recall, Staticus started off with the all-positional zero reroll build, so yes. he's going to be happy that he got anything out of this game, much less a 2-0 yeah, win. This is, and and this is for that matter... He... Of, this is the tell of the tale, though. It doesn't mm -hmm. have really much SPP right now in those two games, now does he? Mm-hmm. That is true, yeah. Well, he did pretty well this game, actually. But uh, he d he definitely does need to build on what he has, which is, is not quite if there I, yet. I, if I remember well, yeah. Last game he had 5 SPP, and that uh, 5 SPP died. Yeah. So this game he pretty much got 12 SPP, and that's his first little points. Uh, not 12, uh, sorry. Uh, no, yeah, he, he got he got twelve because nineteen. The... Uh, I don't know how much it is on riders though. Yeah, but the guy who got like SPP five SPP died. Oh yeah, that's right. So <laughs> <laughs> say hello to my little friends. Pretty much, you know, removing mm. everything not useful to him. Also, I'd like to point out that this guy just keeps on rolling MVPs on his bombardier. I love this. Mm -hmm. All he needs to get is the magical doubles for Hail Mary. You can do yeah. it! I'm rooting for you, negative pro. <laughs> if he does not get it on this level of dirt, then he might as well fire him and yeah. you know, a, try eight, again. A 800 TV bombardier without a double it should be fired. Yep. I mean, a loony with dodge should maybe block, that's still fine. But bombardier doesn't need those things. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up, Le Grand Bleu versus the Merry Ballers. Which is uh, Wood Elves versus... Merry Ballers is the Kislev team, right? <coughs> yes. The Kislev team with two wrestles. Which a I... new message in Mighty Blow Block. This team's looking good. Like, for what it is right now, it's looking real good. Mm -hmm. uh, so, worth mentioning, this was a, actually an admin win. They had a crash on turn 11 or 12. Uh, yeah, and it was very it was very known who mm -hmm. was going to win in this game. And it was strongly favoring the Wood Elves, so they decided to award it to, uh, to Thessa. But I mean, I've also heard that both players have agreed to this, mm -hmm. so, you know, other than that, nothing special yeah. to mention in this uh, game. Uh, unfortunately, you don't really get much interesting to talk about with an admin win. Uh, the but... next game is really interesting, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, having said that... Two Anvils versus Shrek All-Stars, 0-1. Ogres but win! Holy hell. Not only that, the Ogres, they won with a beating, and he was removing mm -hmm. 
Chaos Dwarf after Chaos Dwarf after Chaos Dwarf, and all those hobgoblins, they stayed on the field. Mm -hmm. It was the game where 87 was godlike and 89 was a joke. The ogres killed a Chaos Dwarf blocker. The only hobgoblin who leveled up got move busted. At, the ogres scored their one touchdown with a throw teammate touchdown, which was posted on the ret on Reddit, by the way. You should go and watch it if you haven't, because it's amazing. And with the level ups, <laughs> he got a edgy three ogre. And it's like everything you could possibly dream for, or all dream or and hope for, all happened in this game. The only thing and four expulsions. <laughs> The only thing which is a little bit sad is that co-play is now movement allowance full. Hmm. But, you know, other than that, solid, solid team. Solid level ups, looking really good. Even though he had a very bad early game, he now has a win, sitting on 1-1 one, one this season. Not bad at all. Quite possibly sing quite possibly earning Ravenpoe. The stunt, uh, the stunty place in the playoffs in one game. <laughs> well, say hello to my little friends. Are uh, going to really fight for that title? I think. Oh yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they started drawing ga more games as the season progresses. But with only loner no noblars, they might struggle to actually win them. Yeah. Anyway, next game is the Oyo. Rumble Boys versus Iron's Forge, a 1 1 draw between R Nurgle and Dwarves, as sometimes happens. <laughs> it was a little bit of slow of a pickup. <laughs> yeah, no, just. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, the Iron's Forge, let's see what they got. Uh, oh, yeah, they actually. Um, the um, Tsirari actually was asking us when the recap was going to be released because we were rather late, but once we were behind the rollover instead of in front of the rollover, and I said mm -hmm. that he shouldn't worry and that we were going to do it today. Um, he also said to me that he now has a Pump Troll Slayer, which he's very eager to use in his next game, and he just can't wait to use it in his next game versus, let's see who he's facing. He told me, but I can't um, remember right now. I might even have it written uh, down. Uh, right. no, I don't. The Merry, no, the versus the Kislev team of the Merry Ballers. So ah. Iron's Forge and the Merry Ballers already played as well, and it seems that the Kislev had the better end of the shtick. No, 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 we don't talk about it until next week. Yeah, I know, it just, just, this is something he shouted mm -hmm. out, so I'm just going to say this. What's happened mm -hmm. in that game, I'm not going to say the statistics look very sweet. Hmm. Well, as for the, after last week's game, it looks like they really just bashed each other, and they couldn't. Neither could outbash the other. Dwarves got a few yeah. more blocks, uh, and the removals on the Nurgle side were a little bit more permanent. This Nurgle team has rerolls, so that's already a, a big win in mm -hmm. my book. <laughs> and a Plus, dirty player you know, rotter. This is really useful when you're facing something mm -hmm. like. Dwarves at all the 8 and uh, 9 thing. Quick check. Does I... Iron Forge have only one runner or two? Because their current runner is Miss next game. Um, I think they have two. Let me uh, check. There's a Blotch one. Uh, no, wait, it's a Blitzer. No, he has two runners. Hmm. Okay. Grimbrol yeah. and Varken. Because I think, but, he, um... I think he would have had a pretty interesting game. Had he been playing with no runners. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, the Royal Rumble boys, I just want to give a small shout out mm -hmm. to this, have Shawn Michaels, which Fluffwise is very important. Fluffwise is correct. is a rather fast player. Well, Shawn Michaels was a rather fast wrestler. Mm -hmm. but having a plus move on a router is still a very old choice, if you ask me. <laughs> I cannot fault him for staying on theme. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a very mm -hmm. fun choice. The next thing he needs is agility, then. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the last t uh, match we're looking at is uh, Kepri do it! Yes, we can! Versus Jazz Poison. And the Kepri this won match... this 1-0. to zero. This match is recorded, and I have a stream bot of this. I don't know if stream bot is already removed, but it was watchable last week during the whole week. Uh, I think they stay up for two weeks if you don't save it. 
anyway, Makmaki won this match, 1-0, but it was sort of a hectic match, like, you know those matches where everything just fumbles, mm -hmm. things randomly knock each other out, die for no reason, GFI and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. It was one of these matches, but then with the Kemri having a slight advantage because of their nice development. Mm -hmm. Plus, having four strength five players against Stunty certainly doesn't hurt either. I mean, there was a claw mighty blow troll running around, which was very dangerous for a um, Tomb Guardian to face, but... That is very he, true. He didn't do a lot. And mm -hmm. Mac has a very good development out of it now. He has a block thrower. A dirty bear skeleton and three mighty blows, one of them being a pump, one of them being tackle. That's all you need for an mm -hmm. early good control Kemri team. This team is going to make it in the future. Mm -hmm. For the love of God, make Mac Mackie name your players. Meanwhile, Jazz Poison took minus movement on hit on their thrower. And a lot of missed next games, but their next game was against Goblins, so I think they probably managed to play that one off. I mean, it wasn't a good game for them, but I wouldn't be sad if I uh, was a Jazz Poison Space Line. I would just fire the thrower and hire mm -hmm. a new one. And I would embrace the fact that I would have a plus edgy goblin. A plus edgy underworld goblin. Yeah, you that is... The op options are for this thing. Well, you immediately take Big Hand, is what you do. It can take Big Hand. Big Hand and Leap and lock very long legs, and it's just... <sighs> It's amazing. This thing is going, this thing is going to be cancer and can't. It just can go at least until it wants, the troll eats it. Anywhere it wants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the troll eats pro, of course. Okay, uh, those this are the going to be amazing. Those are the games from last week. Now uh, let's look at our teams. What did you pick this week? Uh, I picked because what else could I pick after his game? I picked Shrek All Stars. <laughs> of course. I Somebody once told me the world is. <laughs> go on. Hey now, you're an All Star. <laughs> Get your game on. Go play. Go play. I'm, hey, I'm not singing. I'm just saying the names of the not bars. <laughs> <laughs> hey now, you're a rock star. Get the show on. Get paid. It is terrific. He's. Almost at his third reroll, which is going to be good for him. Uh, he has five ogres currently. Actually, I wonder. I think he'll probably take the third reroll before he gets the sixth ogre, especially since he wants to develop the ogres he has. I would have to imagine. But Raven Poe has been doing great with his team. Not only that, but he's being an absolute gent on Discord as well. Mm -hmm. Like when he was playing his team, he was just spamming all sorts of different um, Shrek and um, Hey Now You're an All Star song. Mm -hmm. versions on this called just to listen while the match was playing it was fun yeah so he has 13 players which is but his tv is still pretty low so he can reasonably induce say noblar if he wants to or uh mm -hmm. who's the goblin bomber called um well the goblin bomber anyway bomb bomb burst dribble snot yeah dribble snot that's it i know he's a fan of dribble snot and who can blame him really <laughs> I think I think Dribblesnot actually was in the game. Um, I think he was at that last week. He has yeah. a plus agi. He has a block ogre. He has a plus agi ogre. So he has two ogres who are good ball carriers. He has a pylon ogre who is nearly at their second level up. Um, and for his mobility options, he has break tackle as well. And he actually talked about this on the forums a little bit. And I... If we look at uh, Spigasaurus and we look at Ravenpoe, they have two very different philosophies to building ogres. Yep. And I don't think either one is wrong, really but it's very interesting looking at the differences. In the case of Ravenpoe's yeah. team, he... He loves his snoblars. Mm -hmm. He likes having the, knob, the extra noblars, but he's also, in terms of the ogre development, uh, whereas Spigasaurus went for maximum mobility, Rivenpo relies a lot more on having good positioning so he can hit each turn, and he yeah. has just the one and a half ogres that can reposition freely. And of course, both of them started with low reroll builds, so that is sort of amazing in itself. 
well, that's just the case. Like, if you play an ogre team, then you've got an ogre. You're not going to play what, two ogres and a bunch of nobles. I, I mean, you can actually start with four ogres and four rerolls and still have 13 players. Yeah, the richest team that there's, you know what he's mm -hmm. doing right now? He's playing his humans again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that should say enough about mm -hmm. that build. So, I sort of like how he's developing his team. I'd like to see more ball carrying skills on his agility guy. I would like to see, hmm, what would I would like to see Juggernaut on his piling on over, I think. And, That's actually a really good shot. And I'd like to see Fren Guard Frenzy on his if he gets uh, blockers. Frenzy and Juggernaut, Frenzy if he gets doubles, and then he will have like a pseudo that ogre. I might um, consider taking Tackle guy. instead of uh, instead of Frenzy. But uh, yeah. Uh, it could work as well, but then you more have a ball second rather than a killer. <laughs> that is true. Uh, regardless, though, I cannot wait to see where this team goes from here. I look forward to hopefully more one games. <laughs> okay. Now, the team that I took to review this week is Stauticus, his Grungy Deserts. With a very special reason in mind, actually. The fact that he's doing a zero reader Nurgle build and sort of struggling right now, even though he actually got a win and then a loss now, does sort of bring a sort of a throwback to one of my own teams. I am the Cripple Cup champion. I won last Cripple Cup, but I've done it with a zero reader Nurgle team. Now, it's a different format, and everybody doesn't have rerolls, and like, you know, apothecaries and blah, and stuff like that, and you only are allowed to warriors and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, which makes a difference, but... Actually, you're not even allowed rerolls in Cripple Cup. Yeah, they're not allowed them. But the thing is, playing a zero reroll Nurgle team is actually more doable than people might think. Because if you can get your warriors to get early block, together with the final appearance and disturbing presence, if you play an extremely good position game, then you should be able to just roll with it. Of course, it helps if you don't roll skulls as well. Yeah, that's the thing. You should expect to roll skulls in position in that sort of a way that you expect skulls mm -hmm. and expect hyper safety. It's mm -hmm. like a completely different play style than when you are playing normally. And with Nurgle, you can actually physically really do this well. Mm -hmm also is going to have lower team value now of course it's going to save up for rerolls but the lower team value right now is going to make sure that you can get like chainsaws and other fun things versus opponents and and worth mentioning Stoticus has only gotten one level so far and it was and he took mighty blow so it's clear where his priorities are and they're not with playing safely <laughs> Mm, yes and no. With the Pestigor, personally, I would have got Mighty Blow at first as well. If my two first warriors would level, I would give them block. If my other two warriors mm -hmm. would level, probably more tempted to give them Mighty Blow as well for the early development and then give them block. Mm -hmm. The next Pestigor who's going to level probably should get Sure Hands for safe picking up. Uh, so, you know, you get the reroll and pickups and stuff like that. And one of the best things you can do. With a team like this, is get skills, mm -hmm. which are rerolls. Like, you mm -hmm. know, if you can get a sure hands, if you can get a dodge, those players are going to be really, really useful mm -hmm. for this team. Uh, speaking of rerolls, he is probably, after his next game, going to get his first reroll. Uh, unless yes. he opts to replace a Pestigore instead. Well, I think he's going to go for the reroll and then get the Pestigore and then get the other reroll. I think that's or what I would probably do as well. First. Is it Having just that one reroll for true emergencies helps a lot. You can do it with three Pestigors. The fourth one is not mm -hmm. that dearly needed. If you would lose another one, then I would think about getting another Pestigor. The tree's fine for now. Yeah, like usually the fourth Pestigor is like the all rounder in case something happens to one of your other three. Like you want one Pestigor for sacking, you want one Pestigor for murdering, and you want one for ball carrying. And also, I am looking at the schedule now to see what opponent is going to play with. Because if he obviously if he's going to face Bash now, he's going to struggle real hard. But his first two games are actually versus agility teams. So if he just focuses on them developing this season and not on like you know winning, 
mm -hmm. then he should be able to actually get lots and lots of development going and all these bodies he's going to hit in the next weeks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this team can go either very well or very bad, but depending on how well Staticus is a master strategist in basing, he should be able to at least get some good results out of this. And it is worth saying, he is playing Nurgle, so he's probably playing with his next season in mind. In mind, yes. Very, very probably. <laughs> Historically, Nurgle has done not so great in their first season, but really well in their second, in the Rebel. Look at Witch's team. It's... Ugh. Mm -hmm. I am going to have to kill some players there because it's getting out of hand. So, uh, I believe that just leaves looking at the this week's matches. Two of them have already been played. We're not going to talk about those. One of them was amazing. For people who want to watch a replay, watch the Mary Ballers vs. Iron mm -hmm. Sporch. You won't regret it. Uh, which game I want to talk about? You take one because I'm still Okay, looking. well, I know which game I want. I picked this one well ahead of time. We're talk I want to talk about the Frozen Dead North versus the Shrek All-Stars. <laughs> Because I figure I may as well go all in on the o on the uh, ogre worship, right? Uh, <laughs> Everything is all ogre for Kiyosubulu now. Haha, -ha, I see what you did there. So, uh... But yeah, necromantic versus ogre. Mm -hmm. Isn't this just going to be a speed game? <laughs> I mean, with the way that Ravenpo's ogres are developed, it, Your mate is still it, dead. it w very well may be. But... I think it will actually be an interesting match because the uh Gale, did you just die? I think you just muted yourself. Oh, did I? I can see the mute button in uh Discord. Oh, okay. Uh I hit the button by accident. Sorry. Uh, no one that I was not hearing you. So yeah, mm -hmm. um It's necromantic. It's fast versus slow. What do you do? Uh well it's not as slow as it may seem with the way that these ogres are developed. <laughs> There's, There may not be that much of the necro... Like, the only thing on the necromantic team that might actually be able to stand in their way is the flesh golems, and we know how flesh golems work in Rel. That is how they get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is, though, and uh, this is something I really would like to see, but I think one of the ways to win this match is going to be Ogre Ball. Well, Ravenpo definitely has the team developed for it, but at the same time, uh, I think positioning will be really important for him because those werewolves are going to probably be out to kill some ogres. I mean, killing a Noblar, sure, it's fine, it's nice, you get SPP out of it, but you don't really walk home feeling fulfilled. It's like it's like popcorn. You can always have, yeah. Actually, it's like popcorn. But that, but killing one of those ogres, that's something you can be really happy about. Yeah, the thing is, they do not have mighty blow. Mm. They only have claw. So at best, they're going to get a knockout, and mostly they're going to score a stun because ogres have mm. thick skull as well. I mean, so these werewolves are only going to tickle the ogres. I mean, that's true, but it's still a 40% chance to get a armor break on a knockdown. And then he has the linemen, the zombies, to follow up with the foul. It still, it's going to be really small. I mean, you have to put a zombie next to five ogres, and that's not going to be a great foul. The, the Necro should not try mm -hmm. to play that game in this game. It's not going to work versus this team. I can tell you that it's going to have to play the agility game, and mm. then it's probably going to win. I mean, statistically speaking, Necro has a pretty good chance of winning, yes. But what I'm trying to get at here is I think this game has the potential to be a very bloody and entertaining match to watch. Oh, I think it will be, but I think the Necro is going to be on the receiving end of that then. Playing Stunty, you don't go in expecting to win a game. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. If an Obla dies, who cares? <laughs> Exactly. That's a, that, that's a trophy which I wouldn't even bring to call and he would be disgraced. Mm -hmm. I just crushed in my hand and just, you know, blow away the mm -hmm. dust. The annoyance which was right in front of my feet. So Anything else you want to add? Uh, I don't know that there's really that much else to add to it. 
I look forward to seeing the results. <laughs> right. Now, if I look at the leaderboards, then I see that a Kemri team, Kemri do it as we can, has two wins and zero losses, and then Souls of Dragonfire has two wins and zero losses. So my team, I, no, my game this week is going to be Soul of Dragonfire's pro in a party versus Kemri do it. Yes, we can. One dirty player, three mighty blows, a piling on, and a tackle versus four high elf catches with an apothecary, amazing blitzes with guards, and 200 TV difference. So probably we might see Hack and Slash and mm -hmm. Ali Badat. Because yeah. Ali Badat and Hack and Slash together are around 200k. Mm -hmm. Maybe 210, 220. The alternative might be to take one and a bribe. Yeah, but. I don't know. The, the one on the bribe, if you would take hack and slash in the bribe, that's 220 or 250 already. I don't know. How... Ali Badat is only like, uh, he's only like 80. How many? And he has players mm -hmm. already. How many players are on the Capri team, actually? 13, so he's going to fall mm -hmm. already. He already has a bench. He doesn't need to keep those players around. He's going to use them to mm -hmm. put more damage in, you know, chainsaw, stab. So this is going to be a bloody match for the elves mm -hmm. and a maybe annoying match for the Kemri if he, mm -hmm. you know, isn't able to stop the onslaught scoring of the elves. Yeah, because looking at the match history, I wouldn't be surprised if Soul of Dragonfire uh, tried to go maximum score like he did against, uh, like he did in his previous game. That's so probably the tactic he would also mm -hmm. have to take. I mean, he can stall out like a Super Bowl game, but. That's only going to get you hit more, so it might be smart to score, mm -hmm. and you know, screen, and, and score on the screen. And really, against Kepri, he can pro if he can score twice, he can probably outscore the skeleton. Yeah, so... outscoring Kimberly is easy, but the thing what Kimberly are going to do is they're not going to try to outscore elves, of course. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to completely annihilate this team and then just walk it in. That is true. So, uh, my prediction here is sort of mirroring the our previous match we looked at. I think the High Elves have the advantage for winning, but they're going to probably take massive losses doing it. High Elves? Sorry, Pro Elves. I was about to say. I think it's they're going all, to they're be... They're all Elves to me. <laughs> it's going to be 2-0 versus 2-0. It's going to be 2-0 on the touchdown differential for the High Elves. It's going to be 2 kills for the Kimri. I guess we'll see. I think Elf will die that day. There's almost no way around it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? To this match? No, this is it. Uh, I think this was it also for this recap. There is no nose dive again, so sorry guys. We're mm -hmm. only going to do two teams this time around. And next week we're also going to probably only do two teams because I won't be around. Mm. Uh, next week will hopefully hopefully be a little earlier in the week, though. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, having said that, I believe we are done. So, uh, play well. Like, what is it? Blood who's? I don't know what the damn phrase is. is. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, I think you are a little bit stuck right here. Yeah. So, um, the one thing mm -hmm. we still... Well, no, I think we did everything. So, the one thing we still only can mention is that, like, um... We, ah, oh, god damn it! No, there is nothing to mention. I actually am just stalling where there is actually nothing to stall anymore. Okay, so, yeah. I guess we're done. People, I wish you a good night, a good day, good night, good, good morning, whatever good, time uh, it is. Christmas, a good Christmas, a good Halloween, a good whatever, and see you for the next recap. Make sure you turn sixteen foul. Bye. <laughs>